Hi, I'm Kyle Houchins. I'm a technical trainer for McNeil, and I wanted to talk to you today about something that keeps coming up in my classes and on the forum and things like that. And it, it's something that I like to refer to as rule of three. And it's particularly applicable to sub Ds, and a lot of folks are diving into sub Ds and trying to wrap their head around what that is and what that means. And I'm seeing a lot of models with a million faces on it that don't necessarily need to be there. So I wanted to make a quick video and talk a little bit about this concept of rule of three. And rule of three, simply stated, is it takes three points to make a corner. All right, this is a lead in, this is a lead out, that's your corner. If you want the corner to be closer, you move the points closer together. If you want the corner to be softer, you move the points farther apart. All right, very simple concept. We don't make corners like this. We don't do this to make corners. That is not how you make a good corner. We do not do that. You only need three points. And the reason you only need three points is because Rhino does the work for you. Every time you lay a point down, Rhino has to go there. And so what you're doing is you're losing the benefit of allowing Rhino to do the math to create these beautiful soft curves for you. So with that in mind, and, and if you've done any NURBS modeling over the last couple of years, or if you're new to NURBS modeling or whatever, this is a good refresher for you. If you've been doing this for a long time and you're just getting into sub D, this is a good refresher to, to kind of keep an eye on your sub D models. The next thing that I want to talk about is if I bring up this next curve, right? This still follows, let me move it off to the side here, still follows rule of three. And if we turn the points on for it, you can see that I've got a corner here, right? One, two, three. Now I've also got a corner that, that picks up right where this one ends off and starts going in the other direction. That corner is made up of one, two, three. Now, they happen to share this point, and that's okay. The problem is, if I modify this point, it affects the curvature of not only this side, but also that side. And the reason for that is because they share this point. Okay, so if I need to isolate these curves from each other, and if we look at this, this happens all the way through the curve, right? So this point is shared between this corner and that corner. This point is shared between this corner and that corner. This point is shared between that corner and that corner, right? So you, you get what I'm you get where I'm going. So in order to in order to have corners that are isolated, we need to look at something like this. This still follows rule of three. There's your corner, there's your corner. There's your corner, there's your corner. Now, what doesn't happen here is these three points do not share any part of themselves with the adjacent corner. So I can adjust this corner to be soft, and I can adjust this corner to be sharp, and they don't affect each other, right? These operate independently. In fact, I can move this corner up here, and I can move this corner down here, and they don't change each other's shape with inside the point. So that's kind of the whole idea here, right? So what I want you to think about is corners are made up in groups of three. If we look at a sub D, you'll notice that they have very similar structure if I turn the points on. I've got a lead in and a lead out lead in, lead out. I've got one, two, three to make up my corner. I've got one, two, three to make up my corner. If I want it to be a sharper corner in a sub D, I tighten this up. If I want it to be a softer corner, I pull them apart, just like NURBS curves. So everything you know about NURBS applies to sub D as well. So what we want to talk about is when we start getting into sub D modeling, how do we control corners and what do we and what do we use to do that with? And if I go into my perspective view, you can see that 
in a sub D, let me hide this, in a sub D we have to keep in mind that not only is our corner made up of these three points in this direction, but it's also made up of three points in this direction. So we actually have to take into consideration all of the points and all of the groups of three all the way along the corner. So say for instance I wanted this side to be sharp. I would move these points to be closer and let's say I wanted this to fade out. I would adjust like this to the point where I could essentially fade that corner to go from sharp to soft. Alright, so as long as you understand these groupings of three, it makes it much easier to understand what to do with a sub-D. So let's talk about how to do transitions in a sub-D a little bit. And I'm going to just do this with a cube. So let's take a look at this. If I turn my points on, I can just start counting. One, two, three. That's my first corner. One, two, three. That's my second corner, right, down here. And so that means I've got one point in the center that is isolated between the two and I can either scale them or do whatever without dramatically affecting the corner shape in here. Now if I want to isolate that further then that means or I want to have a different type of transition in here I can add or remove edges and in this case let's add an edge over here and let's add an edge on the other side. So now I've got one, two, three, one, two, three. That's my corner, but I've also got one, two, three in here, which means I can pull this up or I can pull it down and it doesn't affect what's going on. On this end can be sharp, on this side it can be soft, and now what I have to keep in mind is, is this corner right here is controlled by these three points. So if I want to control this corner independently from this corner, then that means I probably need another edge in here. Let me get my edge loop. So let's add another edge here. So now I've got one, two, three edges, which means I can control this corner completely independently from this corner. Okay? So once you start to understand that, you can say, okay, well, I want this to go down, and I want this to be sharp, and I want this to go up, but if it's going to go up, then I have to look to see who its partners are, right? Which are these two. So if this is going to go up, those three control that shape, these three control that shape, these three control that shape, these three control that shape, right? And and so this whole idea of of three and pairs of or groups of three is really really important when you're starting to lay stuff out. So let's say we wanted to lay out a shape in sub D that went something like this. All right, and let's say this is a, this is a sketch or you know something like that. We wanted to try and lay this out. We can start with just a simple face. All right, one, two, three, four, and I'm going to hit the tab key and go to box mode, and I can see that this shape goes up and down. So that means that my third point is going to need to be, I don't know, maybe somewhere over here. Like that. And then maybe my apex point, or my center point, needs to be a little higher. And that needs to be over here. So that gives me the three I need to make that shape. Now to make this lower shape down here, Let's say I want to be able to control these independently. I can go, this is my first, this is my second, this will be my third, and I'll go somewhere over here, and then we'll just adjust like that. 
And I always like to say box mode is for modeling, smooth mode is for tweaking and detailing. I've got another shape here, right? It transitions from this kind of inside shape. And maybe I need to move this edge over just a little bit more like that. And maybe I need to move this one up a little bit more like that. And it transitions from this inside shape to this outside shape. So that's my first edge. That's my second. That's my third. It's going to go up there and come down here. Very methodical, right? It's very doesn't have to be complicated. Let's let's keep things as simple as possible. So that's the first one. That's the second one. That's the third one. Just going to follow this along. First one, second one goes right at the apex. And the third one we could probably pull way out here. So let's do that. I'm using shift control drag to get the sub object, the vertexes of these things. So now let's hit the tab key and see how we did. We're pretty close. We have everything that we need to do. Now I can crease these two edges so that we can see what they look like at the end. And I can crease these two points so we can see what it looks like at the end. But we're very close. See, we captured the intent of what we were looking for. And now we just need to make a few little adjustments. We can pull this up, pull this down. But once you understand how these groups of three relate to each other, then it all starts to become fun because you're not fighting your topology anymore. So now we've got this object laid out the way we wanted it. So let's capture some, capture some shape with it. So I'm going to pull this out here. I'm going to copy it, pull it over here, grab, double click, 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 double click. Let's bridge it together. Now, when I bridge, I get some options. If I do, if I want to have crown in this direction, what do I need? One, two, three edges. So I'm going to use one segment right in the center and say, OK. Actually, I think I was looking at the curve. So let me get just this on the screen. So let's bridge that again. Click the ends, double click the ones in the middle, bridge, and I actually want two segments. So I get a center line, one, two, three. So I'm going to say OK. Now look what I've got. If I go to box mode, I've got a center line. I've got an edge here. I've got an edge here. I've got a group of three, which means I can add crown this way or I can add crown this way. If I need it to be wavy, what do I need? I need more edges either in this side. So that's three, and that's three. So now I can add crown here, and I can add opposite crown here, and they don't affect each other. Now, this shape is going to be affected by this edge, this edge, and this edge. So depending on what is going to go on here, consequently, these three are going to make up this edge. So let's hit smooth button and take a look. That does about what I was expecting it to do. We can always use slide to adjust those edges, right? So we can make it really sharp or we can make it really soft. But because we've got groups of three, we understand what's happening, right? So if I sharpen it here, it's going to get softer over here. If I soften it on the right, it's going to get sharper on the left, unless I add another edge pair on either side of this so that I've got three here so that this is isolated. All right, so if you think about it that way, the mystery of this stuff starts to disappear and you start to get only what you need and you don't end up with models that look like this. We don't want that, right? You don't want sub-D models that look like that. You want sub-D models that look like this. Very soft, very light, very easy to manage. And then that way you just know this up is these three, this down is these three, up is these three, down is those three, up is these three, one, two, three, turn, one, two, three, turn, one, two, three, turn. Okay? That makes sense? All right. That's all I have for you today. I'm Kyle Houchins. I'm the tech and a trainer for McNeil. This is Rule of Three. Go make great stuff.
Thanks.